I think I can remember <laughs> look, looking directly at you <laughs> and, and, and getting the rap uh, at the same time. There was one point that came up in the first panel and then in our panel, and I think if, if we're talking about, there's a, so there's a lot of uncertainty, but if we're talking about pain, I do think that swath of small business between 50 and 100 employees, I'd be a little bit concerned about them because uh, there's a lot of uncertainty there. Now, somebody like me with less than 50 full-time employees and the vast majority, I, I don't know what the exact percentage, 80 to 90 percent, I think, of small businesses in this country, 28 million small businesses, they have far fewer than 50 full-time employees. But So, so that, that's a question mark. But again, I, I go back to the, the, the key thing, uh, and I, I would agree with Frank on this. If we can get more people into the system and drive down costs for everybody it means driving down costs not just for the individual but for business and getting this burden uh, I will always offer health care to my employees as a small business owner I would like to see those premium costs go down I'll offer a thought on costs since we have focused a lot on that um, there's a lot of evidence out there that the real driver of costs is the provider system and the lack of integration and the, the silos in which they operate. And it's not only costly, it's bad medicine too. And again, that's one of the hopeful signs of the Affordable Care Act, that it really is trying to change the delivery system uh, through Medicare especially, trying to encourage these development of patient-centered medical homes and accountable care organizations. But the idea is, until you change the delivery system, cost isn't, isn't going to change. And, the, the evidence is that the real cost drivers are the dominant hospitals and the dominant physician networks that, that drive cost. A study in Massachusetts showed that was the real, the real driver of cost in healthcare. And there's a high degree, I mean, the studies have shown that there's a fairly high degree of concentration now in many urban areas uh, in hospital systems, and there's a, uh, a, uh, also a concentration in the insurance industry. So. You know, if you're depending on, on market competition to lower cost and you have a couple of hospital systems negotiating with a couple of insurance companies, neither party is going to have a real incentive to strike a hard bargain and both parties are likely at the end of the day to try to pass the cost back to the, to the lack of concentration which is the, the, the consumer and, and especially the, I think the small business consumer because if you have large businesses, they're self-insured, and they, you know, they are large and have uh, can exercise leverage through that. You know, so it's the small businesses, and, and I think that's one of the the hopes of the Affordable uh, Affordable Care Act is that by bringing small businesses together into the insurance exchanges, they will be able to uh, negotiate. Now, if the exchanges don't work as they should have, or that they you know the system gets uh, clogged up then it's not going to work like that but I think if the if the small business exchanges work then hopefully the small businesses will begin to in this system of lots of giants you know the small businesses need to to play that game otherwise they and their employees are going to be at the short end either not having insurance or uh, having it uh, so costly that it uh, uh, hurts the business and I think one of the problems, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think you said something that's really important that we sometimes lose when we talk about, you know, who's going to drop out, who's going to not hire the 50th employee. What you said was, I'm always going to offer health insurance to my employees. And as a consumer, that's why I like to shop at small businesses, because they do value their employees. I know a lot of small business owners who say the same thing that you do. The reason they pay the high costs now is because it's the right thing to do by their employees. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to continue to see that, which is why I'm excited about an attempt to make things more affordable for small businesses and less concerned about sort of, you know, what's going to happen, who's going to do what to try and cheat the system. I think most people want insurance, and I think most small businesses want the opportunity to provide that to their employees. Well, I, I would say, though, to that, that when you say you'll always offer insurance to your employees, I mean, that's a really wonderful thing to say until maybe you get an 80% rate increase, right? <laughs> so. So I think that, you know, I think that there are a lot of small employers who intend to continue mm -hmm. to offer insurance. Um, they may not find it feasible to continue to offer insurance. I believe that for small employers, particularly ones that fall under that penalty threshold, are going to be looking very closely at new different types of delivery systems for benefits like defined contribution models, which is not something that we've really touched on 
um, tonight, but in a defined contribution plan, um, you give your employees the choice. Um, often through buying individual policies where the business is making a decision, a financial decision, about how much money they want to provide to the employees and then giving the employees the flexibility of deciding do they want to shop in the private marketplace, do they want to buy something through the exchange, you know, what kind of a policy they want, what kind of a company do they want to buy it from. We'll give the last word to our other man from Webster. We're just about out of time and then we'll, ha we'll have to say good night. Well, I guess I would look in other places for some of the costs that's hitting our health care system. I'd look at the, the chronically ill, for example. Uh, we're able to keep people uh, alive for longer periods of time with uh, chronic diseases. I think I'd also look at some of our administrative costs, uh, particularly as uh, it may exist in our billing systems, which are very complex um, and competitive. Uh, and we have very expensive software that drive those. Okay, lots of good stuff. We'll keep talking about it online. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. Art by the Missouri Foundation for Health.